These heavily armed guerrillas lead us to their camp deep in the jungle before they talk. Because despite an impending peace deal, they're still considered an enemy of the state until they lay down their weapons. Five decades of civil war pitted the FARC and several other militant groups against the government and each other. Partly inspired by the Cuban Revolution, the FARC say they represent the rights of the rural poor. Colombia bled. More than 220,000 people were killed and millions more displaced. Over two tons of pure the FARC became embroiled in the drugs trade, financing its relentless war through cocaine. Meanwhile, billions of American dollars were poured in through Plan Colombia to bolster the military. The war took its toll on the country's youngest and most vulnerable. Children were killed and forced to kill. Finally, talks were established on neutral territory, Havana, and lessons from the Northern Ireland peace process used. The FARC in the 21st century is a strange beast. Most of its original leaders have been killed, and after the Cold War, many ordinary Colombians rejected their radical ideology. For decades, these guerrillas have been primed and ready for war. But the truth is now they're preparing for peace, and many have their doubts about exactly where they fit in to a post-conflict Colombia. Some are worried the guerrillas will refuse to give up their guns. El gobierno nacional but their leaders are busy briefing the rank and file and insist they'll disarm. They know what they must do. We have a hierarchy in the FARC and we comply with orders from our superiors. We know we're about to take a very important step. Breakfast before dawn, the discipline and rules, the constant mud and rain. Many are ready to trade the monotony of the camp for new horizons. Now 27 years old, Camilo joined the FARC as a teenager and knows no other reality. I'd like to be a civil engineer, the explosives expert tells me. When they emerge from the jungle, these young people may finally rejoin Colombian society. But some of them fear life outside and the threat of retribution from their former enemies once the world's longest civil war is over. Will Grant, BBC News, Western Columbia.